welcome to our course digital design with Verilog. In today's class we are going to talk about coin McCluskey method. This slide has been prepared from the chapter 4 of Kohavi's book. So, if you recollect uh, our objective is to uh, minimize a switching function which is given as sum of product form. And what we have seen that the overall idea is like that you identify all the prime implicants of that function and then you select the essential prime implicants which must be there in minimal expression and then you remove the prime implicants which is already covered by the essential prime implicants those are the redundant one and from rest of the prime implicants you select a subset such that your overall literal count and the product term count is minimum right this is the idea and your final objective is to cover all the min terms right. So, this we have seen and we have discussed a process which is uh, based on Carnot map where we uh, put this uh, we put the number in a uh, table and we organize the min term such a way that uh, two min terms they are adjacent they just differ by a one bit right and uh, you can just club these two min terms together to create implicant right and your objective is to create a as large cube as possible that means you try to cover a as many as number of min terms with a single uh, product term or a uh, min term. So, that way you can actually reduce the uh, size of the uh, your minimal expression ok. But what we have seen that this Carnot map is good for understanding the process, but automating this is difficult in Carnot map based method. And second thing is that uh, this is for a larger number of variables say 20 variables is very difficult to uh, develop uh, visualize the things in Carnot map as well ok. So, the other procedure which is quite popular is uh, called tabulation procedure where we tabulate this bin terms in a specific order and we can actually do a iterative process of creating uh, implicants uh, in a successive steps and then we can end up having identifying all the prime implicants ok. And this method was developed by Kwan and McCloskey. So, we are going to talk about this method today and this method is easy to easily programmable. So, we can easily automate this process. So, let us try to understand the basic concept of point microscopy with an example. Let us say you have given 4 min terms in a function which is say w bar x bar y bar and z bar. So, let us uh, there are 5 min terms ok. So, w x y z w x y z bar then w bar x y z w bar x y z bar ok. So, the function has this 5 min terms ok and your objective is to uh, create a minimal expression for this function. So, if we try to put this values in a Carnot map let us try to see. So, we have 4 variables. So, I need uh, a map where we can represent all 16 min terms. Uh, so, w x y z. So, my columns represent by w x y z and their value can be 0 0 0 1 1 1 1 0 and y z value is 0 0 0 1 1 1 1 0. First bit is this and the other 4 bits are basically this ok. So, now if you just try to uh, solve this is a Carnot map you can easily see that I can club this 4 uh, mean terms together to create a prime implicant and which is nothing but x y right and this cannot be club with this. So, this is itself a uh, prime implicant and which is basically w bar x bar y bar z bar. So, this is my minimal expression corresponding to this function ok. Now, uh, let us try to uh, see how uh, go little bit uh, deeper into this particular example. So, let us try to encode this uh, mean terms in terms of uh, boolean variables ok. So, this is basically uh, all zeros right. So, this is basically all zeros. This is all 1, this is 1 1 1 0, this is 0 1 1 1 and this is 0 1 1 0 ok. So, if you uh, look into this two main term, we can see that uh, they just differ by a single bit right. So, they just differ by this bit. So, I can combine this ok and I will get end up getting 1 1 1 dash this will be removed right. So, this is basically w x y. 
So, this way also I can club this two where this two also differ by this two bit in the this is w x y and z. So, they also differ in the single bit for z. So, I can combine these two and I will end up getting 0 1 1 dash right. So, this is w x y. So, these are two implicants right. So, this w x y and w bar x y they are the two implicant ok. Now, I can again club these two together because what I can see here that z is removed in both cases. So, z is not there. So, I put them as a dash and now they differ by a single bit in w. So, if I club these two, I will end up getting x and y 1 1 and these two are already removed right. So, this is effectively I got x y by clubbing these two 4. So, this shows a process where I just combine two main term together or they differ by a single bit. Right. So, instead of identifying uh, the bigger cube of size 4 directly what I did I basically find out uh, this particular mean term first this is basically uh, w x and y which is this one w x and y and this is the another implicant which is w bar x y ok. And then I club these two implicant together to find out this prime implicant right. So, instead of finding the the bigger uh, prime implicant in one step, I just do a step by step process which is can be this way ok. Similarly, I could have uh, combined similarly, I could have uh, combined uh, other way also right. So, let me just try to show you this way. So, suppose I take this one and this one ok. So, this is 1 1 1 1 and 0 1 1 1 ok. So, if I combine these two I will end up getting x y z ok w is removed. Similarly, I could have take this one and this one. So, this is 1 1 1 0 and this is 0 1 1 0. So, they again differ just by single bit ok. So, again if I combine these two I will end up getting x y z bar ok. So, now you can see I got two implicants and where they differ by a single bit now ok. So, this is basically if I put this way this is 1 1 1 and this is dash then dash 1 1 0. Now, I have two implicants which is also differ by a single bit now ok. So, if I combine these two I will again end up getting x y dash dash which is 1 1 dash dash ok. So, it is effectively means x y. So, earlier I was combining this way ok. Now, I am effectively combining at uh, this way right. So, this is effectively uh, this and this effectively this ok. So, what it effectively suggests that once you have the mean terms you can actually uh, combine this uh, mean terms just uh, two together right iteratively and you end up getting implicants and then again in the implicants level uh, you can again combine this implicant together. If they have the dash in the same position that means, they are, they are the same variable is removed earlier steps and they also differ by a single bit. So, if you keep doing it you will end up getting the prime implicants which is your first objective ok. So, in this case you can see that the first mean term cannot be combined with anybody. So, this plus uh, that is also a prime implicant. So, this is w bar x bar y bar and z bar also adopted. So, this uh, gives us a clear picture uh, how we can automate this and this is exactly being done in coin McCloskey method. So, now let us put little bit more insight into this. So, once we see this two group I can see here the number of one is 4 the number of one is 3. So, they differ by a single bit right. When I take these two group here the number of 1 is 3 here number of is 2 right. So, number of 1. So, that again they are differ by a single bit right. Similarly, here number of 4 is uh, number of 1 is 4 it is 3 right and it is 3 it is 2. So, what it basically suggests that if we can group these numbers uh, this mean terms based on the number of 1 present in the mean term then we can just compare between two adjacent block right. Because I, I do not want to I am always comparing 3 with 4 
2 with 3 and so on right I know I am not comparing 2 with 4 ok. So, this effectively suggests that if I have these groups I can group this uh, mean term. So, so here I have all the mean terms where the number of 1 is uh, number of 1 is 0 then I group all the one uh, mean terms where the number of 1 is 1 then I group all of the mean terms they number of 2 and so on right. So, this way if I group then I can easily just compare this versus this, this versus this, this versus this right. So, this is I do not need to go beyond uh, further right. So, this will kind of allow me to develop a method which uh, can be automated ok. So, uh, if you just uh, try to see the number uh, where within 1 right. So, suppose the number of 1 1 right. So, so, suppose this is one mean term where the number of 1 is 1, there is another mean term which is number of 1 is also 1, but they differ by a 2 bit right. So, the distance is 2. You think about a mean term where the number of 1 is 2 and there is another mean term which is number of 1 is 2, the difference is at least 2 right. So, uh, again 2, the distance between them is 2. So, what it basically suggests that I do not need to compare the I, uh, mean terms within the group because they will always be distanced by 2 right. So, uh, so this suggests that you, you have to just compare between uh, the mean terms that that is have a difference of 1 is only 1 ok. I do not need to compare within the group that the mean terms that has, that has 1 1 because they always differ by 2 bits and then I cannot club them. And also I do not need to compare 1 with 3 because they will be always uh, have a more uh, 1 right they, they, their distance is also 2. So, I do not need to compare them as well ok. So, this is exactly what uh, coin McCloskey does. So, what it does it basically group so given a function in sum of product form. So, these are the mean terms I will club them based on the number of 1 present there ok. So, this is my group where the number of 1 is 0 see there is uh, all zeros and there will be only one possible mean term of that group right there is no other. Then this is the group where number of 1 is 1 see you see here only 1 1 1 1 is 1 1 right. So, which is basically 1 2 and 8. So, I put this uh, 0 in group 0 right then I put 1 2 and 8 into group 1 because they have only 1 and then 5, 9 and 10, 5, 9 and 10 into group 2 here number of 1 is 2. You see every case is there are 2 ones right and then I will have a another group where the number of 1 is 3 which is 13 and 7 right this is the number of 1 is 3 and the last group has 15 which has number of 1 is 4. For 4 variable this is the possibilities ok. So, this way I will group the mean terms and you can see here. So, only thing now I have to do is that I have to compare this group with all the elements of this group, all the number of this group with this, all the number of this group with this and this is only way you can com combine them to get a implicant. I do not need to combine other way also and you have to combine this also ok. So, this is how this coin McCloskey does. So, given uh, the function you just uh, club the mean terms based on the number of one present there ok. And then what we do? Uh, we basically uh, just uh, the ex example I have explained that you try to combine between these two group right. So, what I am doing here is just arrange all mean terms such that all terms in the same group have the same number of 1 and, uh, and start with the number of 1 is 0 and continue the group increasing in the number of 1 ok. And then uh, what we do? You compare each term of lowest group with the successive group right whenever possible we can combine if they differ by a single bit ok. And this way I just combine by this rule ok and this I will keep repeating until I reach to the last group ok. So, once I get all this uh, implicant of the first step then I will start doing the same process for the next uh, uh, for the mean terms or sorry the implicant that I obtained from this step right. So, then next what I will do whatever the term or implicant generated in step 2. I will do the in same fashion right. So, now I will combine the terms they again by a uh, different by a single bit and they have the dash in the same position. The dash in same position indicate that the same variable is removed from both the implicant ok. So, this way I will just keep doing it 
and whatever the unchecked term that cannot be combined with anybody they are the prime implicants okay, of the function. So, let me uh, take an example. So, this is the example that I have taken and this is the grouping right. So, uh, now what I will do? So, I can write a for loop kind of thing right. So, for group i, group i I will compare with group i plus 1 right. So, I will just do this for each i uh, uh, number of groups we have right and then I will just compare each element, uh, each element of uh, group i with i plus 1 okay. And I'll, if they can be combined, they are differed by a single bit, I will group them. Okay. So, now let us say I start with this. So, I have w, x, y and z. I take 0 and I try to see with 1 and they differ by a single bit. So, I can club them. right? So, that means 0 and 1 mean term get combined and they give me 0, 0, 0 and z is omitted. Okay. Then I combine 0 with again they can be uh, they will be basically 0 will combine with everybody because they are always differ by a single bit. So, 0 2 that will give me the mean term 0 0 dash 0 then 0 8 0 with 8. So, this will be omitted dash and then 0 0 0. So, this is done. Now, what I will do I will start from uh, each element of group 1 and I will compare with the group 2. Right. So, now I will say 1 with 5. So, they differ by a single bit. Okay. So, I will create a uh, copy 1, 5. They differ by a single bit. So, this is 0, 0, 1. Right. Similarly, 1 and 9 uh, I can compare. So, again they differ by a single bit. Right. So, then 1 and 9 also can be combined and that will create me this mean term. Right. So, it will give me uh, dash 0 0 1 right and then I can combine uh, 1 with uh, 10 they do not differ by a single bit. So, I will not combine right. So, if you can see here 1 and uh, 10 that differ by a 1 bit 2 bit and 3 bit. So, 1 and 5, 10 cannot be combined. So, for 1 is done now I will do for 2 and with all elements of the same next group right. So, 2 with 5 um, they differ by 1 bit, 2 bit, 3 bit. So, they cannot be combined. So, 2 and 5 will not be combined into an implicant. Okay. So, I will ignore that. 2 with 9, again the difference is in 1 bit, 2 bit, 3 bit. So, 2 and 9 cannot be combined. Okay. I will ignore that. And uh, uh, then 2 with 10, they differ by uh, only 1 bit. Okay, because I will only combine if they differ by 1 bit. So, 2 and 10 can be combined and uh, so they just differ by this bit which is uh, 0, 0, 1, 0. Okay. So, this way uh, I combine. So, remember one thing whenever one uh, term is, is combined with anybody else it does mean that this is already part of a bigger implicant. So, this particular mean term is not an essential uh, prime implicant. right? So, this is already covered by somebody. So, I will just give a tick here. So, 0 is already combined with somebody, 1 is also combined with somebody, 2 is also combined with 0, 8 is also combined with 0. So, they are just ticked. 5 is already combined with 1, 2 is uh, 9 is combined with 1 and 10 is combined with 2. Right? This way I will just give a tick here. So, that means this kind of this mean terms are already covered by somebody else. Okay? So, this way I will keep continue. Now, I will take uh, 8 and I will again combine with 5, 9 and 10. So, this way I just keep doing process then from this 5 with 13, 9 with uh, 7, 9 in 13 and so on. So, this way if you keep doing it I will end up getting this table. Okay. So, this is basically each row says that this is where 0 and 1 combine, here 13 and 15 combine, here 7 and 15 combine and so on. Right. So, this I will get in after uh, step 1. Now, from this I will start the step 2. Okay. So, in the step 2 what I will do, I will again have a, this is a group where the number of 0 is, uh, number of 1 is 0, this is the group where the number of 1 is 1, this is the group where the number of 1 is 2, this is the group where number of 1 is 3. So, earlier I have a group of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, one group is missing because I have added a dash. right? So, now it will be 0 to 3. So, it will always reduce, right? the number of possibility always keep reducing. And in odds case, in uh, if the number of bit is 
4, so in 4 iteration I will stop, right. So, I will continue the same procedure. So, again I will just uh, take uh, the same process w, x, y and z. So, if something can be combined, so I will check this with 1, 5. So, they do not have the dash in same position, I will not combine, right. But so, 0, 1 can only combine with 8, 9 because they have the position same location. So, I have to just check whether they have the dash in same location, then I have to check whether they are differ by a single bit. So, in this case they had just differ by 1 bit. So, it will be 0, 1, 8 and 9, these two can be combined, right? so, 0, 1 and 8, 9 and it will end up giving me this 0, 0 dash. Okay? So, similarly I will now check with 0, 1 with 10, you cannot combine, so I can just ignore it. Now, I will take 0, 2. I, this can be only combined with 8, 10 because they have the dash in same position, right. So, I will just check whether they differ by a single bit. Yes, they differ by a single bit, this and this. So, 0, 2, 8, 10, okay. So, there and then it will come out as this uh, dash, then 0, then dash and then 0, okay. So, uh, this way then 2 and 8 is also grouped. Okay. So, if you see that 0, 8 now, they can be combined with 1, 9 and 2, 10 this group, but let us see now, then I can see that this 0, 8, uh, 0, 8, uh, uh, so the difference here is uh, 1 bit. So, I can, uh, they have the dash in same position and they differ by a single bit, right. So, I can just combine them 0, 8 and 1, 9. So, 0, 8 and 1, 9 this group is already there, right. So, that means if I combine 0, 8 and 1, 9, I will end up getting the same one, right. So, I will just give a tick here and this. So, if I end up getting the same mean term, I will just keep only one copy, I will not keep multiple copies, okay. So, this way my this group is done and then I uh, will just start with uh, again uh, this 0, 8 can be combined with 2, 10 as well, right? they also differ by a single bit and this is the same product term, okay? this is also covered. Now, I will start with this group and try to compare with each element of this group, I will end up getting certain mean term, then I will take this group and I will compare with this, I will end up getting some mean term okay? and if I complete this whole process, I will get this particular table and all of the term are checked. That means, all of them are covered by a bigger uh, prime implicant, right. So, after this we can see that I can uh, st go further, but I can see now, uh, now I can again uh, try to do step 3, where I want to only uh, combine if they have the same uh, dash in same position. But if you see here A versus C, they do not have same position, B versus C, uh, they do not have the dash in same position. So, this cannot be clubbed. Similarly, C versus D they cannot be clubbed because they are dash in different position. So, that means these terms cannot be further combined. So, this this A, B, C, D, these four terms are actually the prime implicants of this function and if I write them it is x bar, y bar, this is x bar, y bar, this is x bar, z bar, this is y bar, z, this is x, z. So, these are the four prime implicants corresponding to this function and this can be done with quine matroski method. Okay. So, this is the final one and uh, we find out all the product terms. Okay. So, as I mentioned one thing is that once I try to uh, combine 0, 1 and 8, 9, I will end up getting this and if I combine uh, 0, 8 and uh, 8, 9, then also I get the same one. What does this mean? So, this I have already explained in uh, in uh, this example where I try to show that you can club uh, this way or this way, it is effectively we end up getting the same product right? or the prime implicant. So, you can create multiple smaller implicant in different way, but if I club them they will end up having the same uh, prime implicant. Right? So, this is exactly the things is happening in that case. Okay? So, now, uh, let us come back to the minimization steps. So, the first steps of uh, identifying uh, the minimal expression is that identify all prime implicant. So, this has been done, 
okay in coin McCluskey. So, I will identify all the unchecked terms are the prime implicants okay and this is not that it will be always in the last uh, table it can be in any table whatever the terms in a previous table also not checked or ticked they will also come as prime implicant okay. What is the next step? Next step is basically identifying the essential prime implicants how you can do that okay. So, for that we usually use the concept of prime implicant chart which is very uh, quite simple. So, I will explain that. So, what we do is here is uh, so this is my final product uh, mean term that I prime implicant that I obtain for my function example. So, what I will do I will create another table now where I will put all the product term or mean term of the actual functions in the columns okay. So, if you remember the function that I have taken was this one which is 0 1 2 5 7 8 9 10 13 15 okay. So, those I will put as column 0 1 2 5 and so on okay. And all the prime implicants that I have obtained I will put them in rows right. So, I put I got a b c d 4 prime implicants I will put them into the rows okay. And what is our objective now? This prime implicant, this four prime implicant should cover all my mean terms. Okay. So, uh, now I will try to find out is there any column where, uh, okay. before that, so what I am going to do, so I, I put this uh, mean terms in column and this uh, prime implicant in rows. Okay. And I know that this A actually obtained from 0 1 8 9 this min terms. Okay. So, that means this A is actually covering this 4 min terms. So, I will put a cross here 0 1 8 9 because this 4 min terms are covered by this prime implicant. Similarly, B is covering 0 2 8 9. So, I will put 0 2 8 and 9 uh, 8 and 10 uh, where I just put a cross it means that B will cover this this uh, min terms and for C and D I will also put the crosses. Okay. So, this is my impl prime implicant chart. Now, is the coverage problem. So, I will try to see what is the subset of ABCD that will cover all these main terms. So, to do so I will try to find out is there any mean term that is covered by a single prime implicant. If that is being done that means that is an essential prime implicant. Okay. So, for example, if you took the mean term 2 which is only covered by B, right? it is not covered by anybody else. Whereas, if you take this 1 which is covered by A and C. So, this is not covered by a single prime implicant. Okay? So, if you try to remember this uh, definition of essential prime implicant, so it is basically covered certain mean terms which is not covered by anybody else. Okay? So, if I map that information into this table, it means that is if there is a mean term or a column where there is a single tick that means this is the mean term which is covered by only one prime implicant. So, that particular prime implicant is essential I have to pick them. Okay. So, after construction of this prime implicant chart what I am going to do I will try to find out the column where there is a single single tick and there are four such column. Okay. So, for them whatever the corresponding prime implicant that is an essential prime implicant. So, in my case 2 is covered by B. So, B is a essential prime implicant. Similarly, whenever I select B it is also covering 10 right 10 and 2 is covered. Okay. So, now uh, for 7 I have to pick D. Okay. I have to pick D because this is must okay 7 is only covered by d but if i pick d that is also covered 15 okay so this way i have to pick b and d for any minimal expression b and d will be there okay so if i pick b that is also uh, covered 0 8 as well right so if i uh, cover so that means 0 and 8 also covered if i pick d that also cover 5 and 5 and 13 as well Okay. So, that means if I pick B and D they already covered this 8 mean terms the only leftover is 1 and 9. Okay. Now, I have to select a subset of A and C from A and C such that this 1 and 9 get covered in this example it is a very simple scenario where if I pick one A that also cover 1 and 9 
if I pick C that also cover 1 and 9 and both A and C has the same number of literals. So, that means this both of them will result in minimal expression. Okay. So, B, D, C. Okay. So, these are the two minimal expression corresponding to this function. Right. So, so this is the overall idea that you com construct the prime implicant chart, then pick the prime implicant which is covering only one min terms. So, they are the essential prime implicant. Then check what are the min terms they are get covered by this. From the rest of the prime implicant, you select a subset to cover the rest of the min terms which is not being covered so far. Okay. So, this is the overall process. Now, I am going to talk about how to handle do not care combinations in uh, this coin McCloskey method. Okay. So, if you remember in Carnot map, the do not care the scenario that never occur, right. So, that means and we have seen that uh, during optimization we have taken them a subset of them that help us to reduce the function. Okay. If you remember the example, suppose I have a function which is these are the min term and this is the do not cares. If I put them into a table, once are the uh, terms that is essential and then these are the do not cares, they are put by hash and I have used this and this and this to get a minimal expression. So, I have combined 8 terms, so which is basically 0, 0 which is z bar, right, because it is uh, only the value variable is z bar, rest are getting changed. Okay. So, what have you understood here that when you try to create the prime implicant, I should use the do not cares. Okay. So, that means, uh, in this table, uh, the initial grouping that I have done for uh, coin McCloskey in this table, I will put the do not cares, add do not cares. Because if I put them here, that will be used to create the implicants and prime implicants. Okay. So, that will help us to reduce the size of the function. Okay. On the other hand, whenever we create this uh, prime implicant table, here it is a coverage thing. right? It is not necessary to cover the do not care case. So, I will not add the do not care in the columns, right. So, do not add do not cares in columns. So, this is how we should handle the do not cares. If I do not add them, so I do not necessarily need to cover them with the prime implicants, which is the kind of objective, because in this example also if you see here, uh, we are we are not effectively once we, uh, so here also, so the, some of the do not cares are not getting covered, right. So, they are ignored. So, if I put them into the column of the prime implicant chart, then they will be covered by some prime implicant and that will create a problem. Okay. So, just to summarize to handle do not cares in coin McCloskey, when I combine the product terms to create the prime implicant, I will put this do not care in that table. But when I try to cover the prime uh, this min terms with prime implicant using prime implication chart, I will not put this do not care in the columns. Okay. So, this way it will be automatically handled. So far, I have uh, shown in this example that uh, I can selecting essential prime implicants are obvious, there is no confusion here. But selecting a subset of this AC uh, which may not be very obvious in some scenarios. We, we have to automate that process also. Okay. Uh, specifically in this example, if I select A that also covering 1 and 9, if I select C that also covering 1 and 9, so I can select one of them. But in reality, there may be some scenario where I have to select a subset judiciously such that number of product term is minimum and that covers all the min terms and the overall number of literal also less. Okay. So, this is not a trivial task and may come with various other complexities. Okay. So, that thing I am going to discuss in next class. Okay. Thank you.